શ્રી સ્વામિનારાયણ ભગવાનની જય અક્ષર પુરુષોત્તમ મહારાજની જય ગુણાતીતાનંદ સ્વામી મહારાજની જય ભગતજી મહારાજની જય શાસ્ત્રીજી મહારાજની જય યોગીજી મહારાજની જય પ્રમુખ સ્વામી મહારાજની જય મહંત સ્વામી મહારાજની જય પ્રમુખ સ્વામી મહારાજ શતાબ્દી મહોત્સવની જય Aksharadham Mohotsoni Jai. All of us have to make major decisions in life, especially as high school and college students. We decide between different internship offers, where to go for our next family vacation, which university to go to, which classes to take, and many more. However, we also make very subtle decisions that not only impact us physically, but also in our satsang. Chana Pawa Sev, that is my fave. Chana Pawa Sev, that is my fave. Yo, what is this guy rambling on about? It's whatever, 2K. All right, LeBron, bruh. Wait, should I take notes? Nah. <laughs> Wait, why did my mom call me? Oh yeah, girl, sabha. It's cool. Ball first, sabha later. It's <sighs> whatever. As we saw, we make many decisions on a daily basis, both small and large. In fact, Researchers at Cornell University estimate we make 227 decisions each day on food alone. And as your level of responsibility increases, so does the multitude of choices you have to make. It's estimated that the average adult makes about 35,000 remotely conscious decisions each day. Each decision, of course, carries certain consequences with it that are both good and bad. We make these decisions to get closer to the result we want, but sometimes we end up missing out on the opportunities that are right in front of us. Let us take an example from one of Yogiji Maharaj's bodhkathas to help us understand decisions better. One hot summer day, a man was traveling from one village to another. Midway through his journey, He grew tired and decided to take a nap under a ryan tree. While he was sleeping, a small ryan fell on his chest. When he woke up, he saw the fruit on his chest, but was too lazy to bend his arm, pick it up, and put the ryan fruit in his mouth. And so he waited for someone to pass by. After a while, he saw a person riding a camel in the distance. He shouted, Hey, stop! The rider, upon seeing the man lying under the tree, thought, this poor man might be hurt and may need water or some assistance. So out of pity, the rider stopped his camel, got down, walked across half a field to the person that was lying down. He kneeled and asked, what can I do? How can I help? Are you hurt? Remaining lying down with his hands folded over his stomach, The man barely lifted his head and said, Orion has fallen on my chest. Please put it in my mouth. The rider was furious. He said, I stopped on my journey, got off my camel and walked across half a field for you. And this is why you've called me? Without another word, the rider stood up and strode off. As the rider was walking away, the man yelled, you're a very lazy fellow. All I asked was that you put the ryan in my mouth. The lazy man only had to put the fruit in his mouth, and yet he called somebody else lazy. Whilst narrating the story, Yogiji Maharaj would compare satsang to the ryan fruit falling on our chest. It is through Maharaj's krupa that we have attained this satsang. But it's up to us to make sure that we take full advantage of this opportunity. We have heard about moksha, but now we need to act and make decisions based on it. 
In order for us to make those decisions, we have to understand the basic components that make up a decision. A decision is simply made up of two concepts, reasoning and intuition. Reasoning is using facts and figures in front of you to make decisions, whereas intuition is a combination of past experiences and your personal values. Intuition can also be defined as intent, the mindset in which we carry out decisions in our life. Many times, we are like the man under the Ryan tree, overlooking the satsang we've attained, thinking that we can always do satsang later. But what's the benefit of practicing satsang? What does satsang offer that nothing else in this world can? The answer is quite simple, the pursuit of moksha. As satsangis, our ultimate goal is to strive to achieve moksha and to attain akshar dham. But unless we understand what moksha is, why we should pursue it now, and how we can attain moksha, we may not be able to make the decisions needed to persevere on our journey to that final goal. So let's start with understanding what moksha is. As many of us may already know, Moksha is the liberation of the jiv from the endless cycle of births and deaths by becoming like Akshar and worshipping Purushottam with servitude. Moksha is a term that many use or know even outside of satsang. It is defined as ultimate redemption. In this sense, it may seem that moksha is only attained when our soul leaves the body and achieves a higher state of being. But in essence, moksha is mo no she, meaning detachment from attachment. So in that sense, any time we can be detached from all of our worries, all of our anxieties, our attachments, our desires, then we can experience that feeling. It doesn't have to be after death. People experience this ultimate bliss due to their association with the Satpurush. But we may ask ourselves, how is the peace and happiness we experience from attaining moksha different from that of this world? Bhagwan Swaminarayan answers this very question in Vachnamrit Sarangpur number one. He says, if one were to gather together all of the pleasures of the vishes, of the countless millions of Brahmans, even then it would not equal to one millionth of a fraction of the bliss which is present in just one pore of Bhagwan. Now this is the reasoning part of decision-making to help us make moksha-based decisions. We need to understand that this bliss that we will attain with moksha-based decisions is eternal and infinitely greater than whatever happiness we may find in this world. Still, we may be doubtful and think, I don't feel happiness in satsang, so how can I be guaranteed that I will feel happiness after attaining moksha? To answer this, think of the following analogy. If you go to school but don't study, you don't finish any essays or do the homework assignments, can you still expect to get an A in your classes? Probably not. In the same way, the sukh of satsang comes when we actually practice satsang, and the more satsang we practice, the more sukh we experience. This sukh that we strive for is evident on the faces of our Sadguru Santos and many other Santos and Haribhaktos. Speaking about Upendrabhai, a devotee from Canada, Pramukh Swami Maharaj has said, Now here's a man whose kidneys have both failed. He spends much of his time undergoing dialysis, yet he puts his suffering down to Bhagwan's wish. He remains so carefree and does bhajan all day. The world labels such devotees as crazy, but one who has such joys will never experience misery. Even if his body becomes weak, he remains strong at heart. One who has bhakti and mema is always joyful and happy. So if we want to attain moksha and actively try to seek it, we will undoubtedly feel and experience the benefits. 
Moksha will allow us to offer constant bhakti to Maharaj and be in his constant service, just as each of us wishes to be in Swami Sri's constant service today. Of course, many of us have already known about moksha and why it's important for us, but we sometimes still question why it's important for us to pursue moksha and make moksha-based decisions now. Whenever we have important deadlines coming up, such as a due date for a school paper, we often put our pursuits of moksha on hold failing to realize that we can both prioritize our academics and our moksha. But after we hand in that paper, another deadline creeps up, and there's another family event that we have to attend. And we continue on this never-ending cycle of putting our moksha off for later. Yes, those deadlines and family events are important, but so is our moksha. Studying for exams and attending family events shouldn't come at the expense of our satsang and moksha. Why? The first reason why it is important for us to focus on our moksha now is that the path to moksha is a journey. It is not about following a niyam once in a while and expecting to attain moksha. Rather, we have to understand that it is a process. Consistent effort and progress is required of us. Think about it this way. If we want to become better at a craft, whether it be a sport, a musical instrument, or a form of art, we can't expect to master it within a few days. We'd need to practice the craft often and with dedication, and only then, with time, would we achieve mastery. In the same way, moksha is attained through the consistent and daily practice of satsang. Hence, the earlier we begin on our journey to moksha and the longer we do satsang, the greater the sukh we will experience and the closer we will become to attaining moksha. The second reason why we should prioritize moksha in our lives is that making a habit of doing daily satsang and pursuing moksha will help us in the future. As Gishores and Gishores in high school and college, we are fast approaching the start of adulthood and our careers. Right now, we are constructing the people we will be in the future. The habits we create now will be the habits by which we live in our future. There will always be tons of excuses for us to not do satsang and put aside our journey to moksha. However, by creating a habit of doing satsang and pursuing moksha, we can ensure that we always progress on our journey. This point is exemplified by a prasang from Akshar Brahm Gunatitanan Swami's childhood. Mulji Sharma was told at a young age, this is the age to play and have fun. You shouldn't spend time in worship like this. You can worship Bhagwan when you grow old. So Mulji Sharma went to look at what the adults were doing and concluded, Father, you said that I should worship Bhagwan only when I become old. But I wandered through the whole village and did not see even one elderly person worshipping Bhagwan. I think that to say that one should worship Bhagwan in old age is wrong. Bhagwan should be worshipped from a young age. Why were the elderly in the village not worshipping Bhagwan? Simply put, they were accustomed to worldly activities, not doing satsang. They weren't in the habit of doing satsang. Like Mulji Sharma, we need to develop a habit of practicing satsang so that we can continuously progress on the path to moksha, both now and in the future. This is precisely what Gunatitanan Swami has taught us in the Swamini Vato. He says, everyone remains happy due to some reason but becomes eternally happy due to two things, Bhagwan and Atma, and leave the many other forms of material support behind. Swaminivat, Section 2, 87. The third reason for making moksha-based decisions in our life is to prevent ourselves from choosing the wrong way to achieve our goals. Cheating on exams, plagiarism, or lying to achieve our grade, degree, or career may seem okay in the short term, but ultimately we know it's not the right way. 
We want to make sure we make decisions that do not violate any professional norms in our life. Moksha based decisions, decisions based on the intent to please Mahan Swami Maharaj, will keep us safe. Most professionals that lose their license in a variety of industries are not due to the lack of knowledge, but lack of professionalism. Tied to things we just briefly mentioned, lapses in telling the truth, maryada or judgment. Mahan Swami Maharaj has perfectly summarized the importance of prioritizing moksha in the Satsang Diksha Granth. In Shlok number 2, he writes, This body is a means for moksha, not merely a means for indulgence and in sense pleasures. Rare and perishable, this body is not repeatedly attained. Then he writes again in Shlok number 3, Personal and family activities are only for the sustenance of the body. They are not the ultimate objective of this birth. And in Shlok number 4 he writes, The body has been received to eradicate all flaws, attain the Brahmic state, and offer devotion to Bhagavan. All this is certainly attained by practicing satsang. Therefore, mumukshus should always practice satsang. So now we know what moksha is and why we should prioritize it in our lives. But we might now be asking ourselves, what are some practical steps we can take to progress spiritually and attain moksha? One such step is to have a firm resolve that moksha is what we want to strive for. If this thought is constantly in our minds, then we will be able to align our thoughts and actions towards this goal. Daily, we should reflect in attaining moksha as our purpose by focusing on the importance and the need to attain liberation. And that is why Gunatitanan Swami reminds us in his Swamini Vato, in section 1, Vata number 301, he says, Apreto Akshar Dhamma Jauche Evo Ek Sankalp Rakho. And Pujamahan Swami Maharaj further elaborates in the Satsang Diksha Granth in Shlok number 145. He writes, What have I come to accomplish in this world and what am I doing? And then in Shlok number 146, he writes, Having attained oneness with Akshar, I offer devotion to Purushottam. In this manner, one should reflect on one's goal each day without laziness. The second step we can take is doing samagam of the Satpurush Mahan Swami Maharaj as moksha is only attainable through the Pragat Satpurush. We are reminded by Sriji Maharaj in Gadra section 1, number 54, the title is The Gateway to Liberation. In it, Sriji Maharaj says, the sadhu who is singularly devoted to God and who possesses the attributes of swadharma, gnan, vairagya, and bhakti is the upholder of bhagavat dharma. The jeev can be released from maya only if he keeps himself in the company of such a sadhu. Our gurus have also emphasized the importance of doing the samagam of the satpurush. Swami Bapa, a Gardinaganu Oxadam, the Lino Oxadam, and a Americanu Oxadam, Bojo, that's a per Siji Marad no Oxadam Kiwasi. No boys. Put a grand tassine, the Melak said, Can you accept them? On October 23rd, the year 2000, Pramukh Swami Maharaj was in Chicago. At the end of the evening sabha, he gave the following ashivad. Pramukh Swami Maharaj explained that moksha is available for those who associate with and serve the Satpurush. It may seem as though doing the Satpurush Samaga means doing his seva physically, but that is not the case. We can also do the Satpurush Samaga mentally. 
revisiting smritis we have with him, watching his divine leelas through Guru Haridarshan videos, and listening to his ashirvad are all ways we can associate with him, even though we are physically far from him. More importantly, following his agnas and pleasing him is the way we can truly measure having performed resolute samagam. Ultimately, doing the samagam of the Satpurush in such ways will help us become closer and closer to Maharaj and Swami, allowing us to progress more and more on our journey to moksha. Overall, the pursuit of moksha is the pursuit of everlasting happiness or sukha. Not only can we experience this bliss after we leave this body, but also right now in this very moment. Since moksha is our ultimate goal in life, prioritizing and taking consistent steps towards achieving this goal is necessary for the liberation of our atma. Following the Satpurusha's agna, developing our understanding of the Akshar Purushottam Upasana, and doing samagam of Mahanswami Maharaj are all steps that we can take. Striving to be one step closer to attaining moksha today than we were yesterday is how we can progress in our satsang and in our journey. After all, like what the man from Yogiji Maharaj's Bodhkatha, nobody else can attain our moksha for us. Ultimately, through the necessary guide of the Satpurush, we have to tread the journey to attain and experience that sukh. Moksha may be an end goal, but is still in our control. We will come across decisions that might at times blur our vision, but if we keep a clearer mind, we'll find that no longer we will be blind. But we can't keep delaying it. We must commit to start now and never quit. In the end, you'll see, it'll be worth it. Make it a priority now, and it'll become evident how much we are missing out on. The feeling of moksha, everlasting bliss, is something you want to feel now. Shri Swami Narayan Bhagavan Ni Jai Swami Narayan Bhagavan Ni Jai Pramukh Sai Maharaj Ni Jai Pramukh Sai Maharaj Shatabdi Mahoso Ni Jai Aplaya Gajendra Ni Vatshe Emato Mukhya Gajendra Se Aplaya Chiyya अने मगर से ये माया से माया अपने पकड़ी रखी से अने अपने युद्ध चालाच करे से हजारों वर्ष थी अने छुट्टवानु कारण तो महाराज भगवान उस शरण अने भगवान केवा भगवान मल्ला से सरोपरी छुट्टी जाए कहीं रेज नहीं माया न कुचे कुचा थी जाए एवे एवा भगवान से तो आपने भगवान की सहायता ली ने भगवान का नियम धर्म पारी ने अने भगवान की मर्जी साची ने भगवान भगवान है संत है संत सतपुरुष हमने मर्जी साची ने आपने जे सेवा भक्ति करिए तो माया सी छुटी जाए अने माया ने पकड़ बहुत है माय ब्रह्मांड में कोई न छोड़े आने थी भगवान ने आश्रय जाए अने भगवान पन सरोपरी भगवान जो मोक्ष अपना एक श्रीजी महाराज थे विजय कोई आप मोक्ष आप ही सके हमने थी अब मैं महाराज बहुत सागर न काठों पे हो ऐसे के अपने माया ठेठ सुधी माया अपने नड़े हैं प्रकृति पुरुष सुधी पन ओलिबाजू पंग मुक्ति है इतने अक्षर धाम्मा इतने ये आपने जे बात करी है कि माया ना पक्कर मासी छुट्टा नहीं बात है तो एक का जो बात है एक तो पहला नक्कीच करण श्रीजी महाराज जज मोक्षापी से या कोई नहीं आ दुनिया में ब्रह्मांड में अनंत कोटि ब्रह्मांड में 
जब कोई मोक्ष आप ही सके हम नहीं ए भगवान से ए अने हमने शरणे गया थी मोक्ष बहुत बदुस सहलू से एक जब तक माँ मोक्ष थी जाए पर अपने हमने शरणों थोड़ा कहीं न रखो अन्य आश्रय ना करो एक भगवान माँ सीधा अपने अरे मोक्ष इतले धर्म ज्ञान वैराग सहित भक्ति करवानी आ तरण गुण से धर्म ज्ञान वैराग एना थी आ बदे विघ्नों दूर थाय पी एक भगवान ज रहे या कोई रहे नहीं आप भगवान में चौटी जवाय बीजा कोई वस्तु आड़े नहीं ज्ञाने कर आप बदी अनंत प्रलय से चार प्रकार प्रलय अने आ बधु एना वैराग उत्पन्न थाय वैराग उत्पन्न थाय क्या चौटे नहीं एक भगवान सीवाय एट आ मूल टूक में ए बात है कि भगवान भगवान में आप वृत्ति रहे भगवान भगवान सीवाय कहीं ना रहे एक भगवान रहे एना धर्म ज्ञान वैराग है ये तरण अपना साधन है एना थी आ, कोई वस्तु अपने भगवान में जोड़ा में नड़े नहीं महाराज एकांतिक धर्म मटे जाया से मोक्ष मटे जाया से मोक्ष महाराज जो एक भक्त चिन्हवाई प्रकरण में अंत आए थे श्रीमद एकांतिक धर्म प्रवर्तक एकांतिक धर्म प्रवर्तक एकांतिक भाव भक्ति करने बीजा कोई भाव नहीं शरणागति में एकांतिक भाव एट महाराज ने ज शरण एट अक्षर रूप थी ने श्रीजी महाराज भजन करवा